Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are Luz and Michelle. We are a husband and wife photo and video team. And in this channel, we talk about professional tips for wedding professionals. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about Aftershoot. So Aftershoot is basically a program that helps photographers call their photos. Now we love Aftershoot. We've been using Aftershoot for probably over a year now and it has saved us so much time in the editing process. I really feel that this program has been so useful for us, especially with the influx of weddings that we've had in the past two wedding seasons. And I really want to talk about some of the things that I love about this program before we get into the specifics. So the first thing that I love about this program is that it checks for repeats. Before we used to do this manually and you know how time consuming that could be. So um, usually when we take photos on the wedding day, we will take multiple photos just to make sure that everything's in focus, that nobody's eyes are closed and all that stuff. Now this program actually will group specific photos together and so if you took a bunch of the same group photos, it's going to group it together. So I love that and I love that it will choose the best one. So. That's one of the pros. The other thing that I love is that it checks for um, if your eyes are closed or not. So again, especially on those group photos, it pretty much does this for you and you don't have to go in one by one as we used to do manually. And you know that sometimes like you get tired and you don't even notice that one of the uncle's eyes is closed, um, but it actually will do this for you. Um, and it shows you everybody's face individually. So you can also kind of take a look and see whose eyes are closed and why it wasn't chosen. And then the third thing that I love about this is that it also will eliminate photos that are blurry or out of focus and this is something you can adjust. So if you're used to having a lot of blurry photos or if you like the look of having the background really blurry, you can actually adjust this. And so I personally love that it kind of removes all those photos that were just not it and I don't have to worry about it and go into it. now. We're going to go into this tutorial and you guys are going to see how it works and you're going to notice that it's a lot of customization and a lot of playing around until you get the setting that best fit you. But I love this tool and I feel that it does a lot of the things in the front end um, for us that we don't have to go ahead and do. So a lot of the tedious stuff. And it provides a lot of flexibility. I feel that this program is, is very good at uh, being flexible and helping you. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you need to also do a little bit of work, you know, because uh, you want to make sure that the program is working as an aid to your system, to your brand, to your company. Uh, and, you know, not just something that you're just going to put in the back burner. You want to work to get the program to be the best tool for you because it is a tool. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to walk you through a step-by-step -step tutorial on how we use Aftershoot to help our business. All right, guys. So now sit down, relax, grab your favorite drink and enjoy this tutorial. Okay, guys. So um, we're going to go ahead and get started on culling a full wedding gallery. And I'm just going to, before we actually get started on culling that gallery, I just want to go ahead and talk about um, the preferences. So the main thing here is in the stars and the colors. So um, this is basically the way that we have it set up. Um, so I have a, a one star um, and I have no color for uh, the selected. Um, that's just, again, my preference. Um, and then um, again, I have the here, the five stars for the sneak peeks. Um, and it's purple, um, and then four stars for the duplicates, and it's red, um, three stars for the blurred, and it's yellow, and then two stars for the close ads, and it's blue. So this is just, again, my preference and the way that I set it up just so that visually when I see things, it's um, easier. So, and again, you guys can go ahead and have that any way that you prefer. Um, now, Let's, the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to import a gallery. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import a gallery that um, we've already done. But I, again, I just want to go ahead and show you guys how we do this. So I'm going to go ahead and import this gallery. So I'm going to import it from the folder. And then that kind of just takes a while. Um, after that, I always just go ahead and put start culling after import so that way I don't really have to worry about things um, and it's just there kind of getting done. So we're going to go ahead and start culling after import. 
Um, and here it lets you set the preferences. So this is really, really important. Um, and it is going to take a little bit of trial and error to see what you like. Um, so um, for us, we prefer to have a little bit more photos and then kind of um, narrow that down afterwards. Um, and I know everybody's preferences may be different, but um, this is basically what we found that works for us. So um, we're pretty lenient on the blurred photos just because we like to use a lot of things that have a shallow depth of feel. And sometimes we are looking for that little out of focus touch. So we're pretty lenient on that. I mean, in terms of the group ring, I am pretty strict just because um, I feel like I wanna have pretty much one photo of each thing. Um, this may come with some challenges. You just may have to look like if there was a slightly different pose, you are probably gonna have to go look and kind of get that. But for the most part, especially with group photos, I want it to be strict. So that's the way that um, we have that set up. Um, after that, selections and duplicate set. Again, we have that as less. Um, the volume of sneak peek previews, we have none. Um, and just because um, after we have it cold, I kind of like to hand pick those ourselves. Um, so that's just the way that we have that. Um, and um, obviously all of this is on. So closed eyes detection, blur detection, and duplicates de detection. Um, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start culling. Um, and again, what's gonna happen is it's gonna import all the photos and then it's going to cull it. So this does take a little bit of a while, but what's nice is that you're not doing it, so you can go ahead and work on something else. So right now, um, it says there's 15 minutes and two seconds remaining um, to go ahead and do that. So we're just gonna kind of um, wait this time and work on something else. Okay guys, so at this point, um, it took a couple of hours to go ahead and just, you know, cull through the images, but again, it was doing it by itself. So, you know, I was able to work on other things and catch up on emails, which is really, really nice. And I didn't have to spend my own time. So, um, basically it took this, these, uh, 5,579 images and it culled it down to 1,041 images. Um, originally, um, it did, it was about like, I'm gonna say 1,300 images. Um, and then I did have to go back and kind of like remove some excess images or some like images that were like test subjects, but otherwise it did a really great job. And so I just wanna show you guys kind of, um, what it looks like behind the scenes so like for example um it did choose one of the images from um this grouping um and then uh it chose obviously the best one um and then uh that was for the flat lays and then it kind of went ahead and did that for the shoes and all the other stuff um so i think it did a pretty good job pretty much selecting the images that I needed. Um, again, you do have to kind of go through and if there's any other one, for example, that you think that is a copy, for example, these two are a little bit similar, um, you can go ahead and remove that. Um, so this is kind of the way that that looks. Um, and if you wanna see any groupings, that's good. So one of the things that I always do is kind of filter it by um, camera serial, just so that I can get a look at what it called from each individual camera. So you can go ahead and take a look. So this was the main camera. And then if you feel like you need an additional photo, you can go ahead and check. Um, I think it does a really, really good job, especially when it's group photos with people, kind of identifying most of the people and most of the different poses. So um, I'll go ahead and show you guys an example when we did bridal party photos. So for example, here we have the bridal party photos. Um, and again, um, there were three images taken of the same pose with this bridesmaid. Um, and it chose here the best one from there. Um, and then there were, again, four images of the same pose with this bridesmaid, and it chose the best one here. So it was, it's really, really nice to 
have to do that, not have to do that myself. Um, sometimes it does um, mistake some people to be the same people, um, but for the most part, that's like a pretty quick fix that you can go ahead and check. I also like that you can see right here their faces. Um, and you can honestly like, you know, you can really see if their eyes were closed or not. Um, and the program pretty much did that for me and I didn't have to go ahead and do that. Um, so yeah, um, after you guys have all your images and have looked through it and made sure that um, everything is the way you guys want it to and remove any images that, you know, you feel don't belong there, um, you can go ahead and export it and then it exports it directly into Lightroom and then you can go ahead and begin editing. So again, saved me a bunch of time, um, four hours to be exact. Um, I didn't have to go ahead and do this myself, so it was really nice. Okay guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed seeing um, just kind of how we go through the process of culling a wedding using this program. Now some tips that I would give any photographer who is using this program for the first time is first not get discouraged with the program if at you know the first time that you use it it's not perfect or like it will you know remove a photo that you liked or if it gave you too many photos like you're going to have to play with the settings in order to make it perfect for you um, and this does take a little bit of a trial and error and again it is a tool that's going to help you like you are going to have to go in at the end and kind of make sure that it's perfect but it's going to save you a lot of time just because you're not checking for all the repeats you're not you know it's going to kind of get rid of most of the photos that you were going to kind of get rid of anyways so um i do recommend it but again it's going to take some trial and error and it's going to take some patience um, to get it to be a successful tool for your business and again uh, the team at Aftershoot they are constantly working to improve this system so right now this system is gonna help you but as you get more and more involved with it uh, you're gonna learn new things the software is gonna improve it's gonna get better the AI is gonna start doing better things and that's gonna help you but you need to start now another tip that I would highly recommend is if you're using multiple cameras is to when you're checking through the images to check per camera I just think it's a lot easier to kind of see the duplicates per camera um, then just kind of see them all scattered all over the place another tip that I would highly recommend um, is to spend some time kind of going through the system that you want so like the stars and the colors and just really make it customized to you and how you guys best work so for example um, beforehand I used to be really used to one like putting a one star on the photos that I selected and a five star for um, the images that I was going to use as a highlight gallery so I kind of customized it so that it fit that same pattern for me um, and I know that everybody's is going to be different so um, I would highly suggest to take some time and kind of go through it and then that way um, the software does remember that so once you finally have it down it's going to have it there saved for you and you don't have to do that again um, it really does save time um, eventually on the back end alrighty guys so if after seeing this tutorial you're interested in learning or using the program we have a special 20% off discount by using the link down in the description and if you guys love this um, tutorial, if you love this video, please make sure to go ahead and like this video. Um, also make sure to go ahead and click that notification bell and subscribe if you want to keep seeing more content like this. Um, if you guys have any questions about how to use the program or you want um, us to talk and elaborate about anything else with Aftershoot, make sure to leave a comment down below. We love go um, going ahead and responding to all those comments and just helping you guys understand this program a little bit better. So like always, um, we loved having you guys here and see you guys next time.